Hey, uh, well, my, my name is John Hales, and I'm a ranch book leader of many years. Uh, I guess the question people always ask is, how did I find the ranch book? And I have to admit that I found it by an accident of birth, uh, being the fact that my grandparents and my parents were members of the forum, so that in about uh, 1950, uh, I was uh, of an age where I could, or I guess it was 1952, that children of four members could uh, go down to 533 and Dr. Sadler would interview you and sort of introduce you to the uh, New Ranch Project. And uh, of course, by that time, uh, all the papers were completed and they're just waiting for the process of uh, the printing of the book. So I attended some of the Sunday meetings and people would read a paper and there would be a discussion. Uh, being in high school, of course, my focus and interests were elsewhere uh, with the normal activities of a high school. The, uh, the four members that I met, they were all older people, obviously, and they were just uh, a regular group of people that were involved in an exceptional kind of project. Uh, people asked me, did I know Dr. Sadler? Uh, well, you know, a 15 or 16 year old boy doesn't know someone who's in their, you know, 80s. So he was like a grandpa. And, uh, but there are other younger people. So those is where you gravitate to. Uh, my parents uh, were under uh, oath not to talk about the Grancher project outside of the forum meetings or just to other forum mem members. So my sister and I growing up were not aware of what, uh, where they went on Sunday afternoons other than to a meeting of adults where they talked about uh, things like philosophy, religion, and science, which to a young person sound pretty boring. So. We had a babysitter, and uh, our routine on Sunday was to go to church, the congregational church, go to, then after lunch, uh, they'd go to the meeting and we'd have a, a fun with our, our babysitter. So, uh, so when I was introduced to the book, uh, my reasoning was is that uh, my parents had spent all those years going to meetings, so there must be something of value there. So I started with the history of the Arantia, uh, history of the Arantia. and since I was had a, an interest in scientific and also UFO sci and science fiction, uh, it just fit right into my interests at that time. But remember, when I was uh, reading the papers before the book was published, you don't you don't have the uh, ability to go to the beginning of the book or to the end of the book. You just had one paper you sat and read at a desk. But the book was published in 55, so then we all had our own books. But it wasn't until I got to college that uh, and taking some religion courses that sort of thought, well, maybe I can find information in the book that would be helpful in writing my papers, which I did. And uh, increasingly, I uh, was more and more interested in the book. And I was able to get into a study group. And uh, so that's sort of, I don't know if you have other questions that you might want to ask. But. Do you could maybe talk a little bit about your parents and how they um, got involved and who they were? Well, uh, it's, uh, you know, like then it was just one of those, uh, uh, my grandmother suffered from depression. And so she became a patient of Dr. Sadler's. And, so in the early 20s, when uh, Dr. Sadler, Bill Sadler, his son, decided to have a Sunday afternoon uh, meeting of adults to discuss uh, issues of the day, uh, he invited my grandma and grandpa to attend. Uh, my parents joined after they got out of college in 1930. Uh, 
Uh, they weren't married at that time, but my mother was dating my father and thought, if Bill's interested, she probably should be interested. And that's how they got involved. Hmm. Uh, so you're third generation. Uh, I guess if you figure it out, I am a third generation reader. I don't know if that has any importance uh, one way or another, but uh, uh, my sister has also became a reader. And uh, so that's sort of my brief but uh, story. And of course, the, the older I got, the more I realized I was blessed with having uh, had parents that were interested in the book because, you know, it's one of those questions if I hadn't uh, gotten the book, I don't know if I would have been a searcher or not, uh, contented with my Christian tradition that I always brought up in. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, there were some Hales, was it your grandparents or your parents who were, um, they would have the summer picnics at their home? Uh, yes, uh, there were different picnics. I remember at my grandpa's house in Oak Park, uh, they are, I think there's some pictures of four members in the backyard. They called them picnics, but you know, the men all wore suits and the ladies all wore dresses. So it was, a, you know, by our standards, it was pretty formal. Yeah. But they had a good time socializing. And, uh, and then there's the other picnics that Doc Sadler would hold down at uh, a, a summer place uh, near the, you know, the Indiana Dunes. Mm. And uh, I liked those because we could go swimming in, in the lake at mm. Lake Michigan. And I, there was some, uh, there was some like school auditorium or something called the Hales after, was your oh, grandfather okay. involved in philanthropy? Um, yes, the, my grandfather uh, grew up on a farm in, uh, in Lorraine, Ohio, and uh, so he went to Oberlin Academy before it was a college, and uh, in the 1890s he came and worked at the uh, the World's Fair as a rickshaw runner on the Midway. And uh, so he was 18 at the time, roughly. And uh, anyway, he ended up staying, coming to Chicago and working in the grain business. And uh, so at some point later on in his life, he realized that at Oakland College, there was no facilities for uh, women, for women's athletics. So he uh, dedicated and renamed funds so they could build a the Hales, uh, I think it was the Hales Memorial Gym for mm. for women at the time. And so he was, he was ahead of his time. And I think he had the encouragement of my of his wife, my grandmother, uh, who was a very forward thinker uh, in those days. Mm -hmm. Are there any other uh, are any other form people who you kind of had a relationship or who stood out? Like I know, um, obviously, Christy and the Sadlers, but also maybe, I don't know, people talk about that sometimes um, Sir Hubert Wilkins would visit. Did you ever have the pleasure of meeting? No, I, I never, uh, you know, it, it, once I, uh, after college, uh, you know, I went, uh, uh, at that, in that time, we all had to do military service. So I went, was in the Navy for three or four years. So I, I wasn't involved organizationally until no. after I got out of the service. Mm. But you would see the meetings when you originally went were quite, um, <clears throat> was it that Bill Sadler would read a paper? You know, I don't have any memory of who read the papers. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't surprise me if it was Bill Jr. Uh, now, in regards to uh, Bill Jr. and his wife, Leon, were uh, socially friends with my parents because they were contemporaries. Mm -hmm. So they used to come out to our house where we lived in the suburbs in, in the summer. And, mm -hmm. uh, have a dinner and uh, and Bill was a very gregarious individual and the thing I really loved about him was he he was happy to engage in conversation with a young person like myself and my sister and uh, he had that ability to uh, he was really interested in what you had to say so uh, you know we formed a friendship and uh, but again, I was, uh, once I, I went away, and then uh, I think he, he he graduated in the, uh, I think, the, oh, he, yes, that's right. He, same he, day as he, JFK. He died, the, he died the same day that, uh, that JFK was assassinated. Mm -hmm. 
So, uh, and at that point, I was on a ship in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. So, uh, would you would you mind just taking a minute to say something about your what you've done, sort of work wise or family wise, or um, you know about uh, your life? Well, I was uh, ended up in New York City uh, and working as a social worker, and uh, at some point. Uh, I think Paul Snyder became president of the Brotherhood, and the executive committee uh, offered me uh, the job of being the first paid employee of the Brotherhood as their, uh, uh, I think they called it resident director. Up to that time, the office was run by, by volunteers, uh, basically all women, and Christy and Edith. And, uh, Marion Rowley and uh, Anna Rawson and I tell it they're just wonderful mentors to me when I arrived there at age 38 and uh, they were a great help uh, and a lot of fun to work with. Uh, and then you spent many decades? Well I started in 1974 and I continued uh, as, a, as that function until 2006 when I retired. Wow. And then, of course, I held positions in the organization, which was not a paid position, but uh, uh, various uh, uh, positions of secretary and things like that. Mm -hmm. And you uh, and you like to you're biking a lot these days. <laughs> well, that keeps me healthy. <laughs> you want to say well, how how often how many bike how many miles do you bike a month or a week or? Well, I try to get out and do a 16 mile loop, you know, two or three times a week. Yeah. And then you go on camping treks. Oh, I have done that. I've gone on uh, group rides, you know, with 500 people or so. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very, very much. You're quite welcome, Michael.